All right, so we are diving right in. This time, it's all about Diddy. Sean Diddy Combs. Yes, Diddy. He's in some serious legal trouble. And to make matters even more interesting, uh, right. his son, Quincy Brown, decides to launch a vlog series right in the middle of it all. Right in the middle of everything. It is a very fascinating situation yeah. because you've got these serious accusations we're talking. Yeah. Uh, sex trafficking and racketeering. I mean, these are the kind of things that could really ruin a career. And then Quincy comes along and drops this just a vlog series as if nothing is happening, like it's a normal day. Right. And, you know, Quincy has been building his own entertainment career, so a vlog makes sense in that context. Makes sense. But the timing of it is just uh, very strange. A lot of people are calling it everything from clueless to calculated. What do you think? Well, it's easy to label it as petty, but we need to look a little deeper. Uh, you know, celebrity kids are under a unique amount of pressure. Right. Their parents' mess becomes their mess, whether they like it or not. And, you know, Quincy probably has a team of agents and managers whispering in his ear about how Diddy's legal issues could damage his brand. Oh, for sure. So maybe this vlog is less about being disloyal and more about damage control. Yeah. Like, hey, world, I'm over here doing my thing, separate from all that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's where things get a little complicated. Because even if it is self-preservation, it still looks like he's trying to capitalize on his dad's downfall. Mm. You know, bad optics, as they say. And the court of public opinion can be brutal. Yeah, absolutely. And the comments I've seen online have been brutal. People are accusing Quincy of being completely tone deaf. Yeah. They're saying this vlog launch is like throwing a party while your house is burning down. And that reaction, that's not just gossip. This is where it moves beyond family drama and into actual legal territory. Right. Diddy's lawyers are probably freaking out right now. Oh, yeah. If this goes to trial, the jurors are just regular people. And regular people, they're influenced by what they see and hear. They're going to be thinking about whether Diddy even has the support of his family. Yeah, so it's almost like Quincy accidentally became a witness for the prosecution, even though he's not actually part of the case. Yeah. Wild, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This whole thing really highlights how important perception is, especially in legal battles that depend on someone's character. Right. What people believe is often more important than what's actually true, at least in the public eye. Absolutely. And for Diddy, public perception is everything. His entire career is built on this image of being larger than life, like a true American success story. But with these accusations, well, yeah. it just cuts to the core of that image, sets trafficking, racketeering. It's not just bad press. It makes people question every single thing he's ever done. And even if he's proven innocent, you know, in a court of law, yeah. the stain on his reputation, it might never fully go away. The doubt will linger for years, probably. It's true. And in the world of social media, those whispers, they echo louder than ever before. Absolutely. So we've got Diddy battling these accusations, fighting to save his legacy, and we've got Quincy trying to make his own way, but maybe making things worse in the process. Mm -hmm. But there's another layer to all of this, right? What about the entire Combs family? That's where it gets really interesting. You see, this is not just a legal battle or a PR nightmare. It's a real test for the Combs family brand as a whole. Okay, so they've built this image, right, of being a successful and united dynasty, even philanthropic. But now everything they've worked for is under a microscope. Exactly. And this is where public perception and family dynamics clash in a fascinating way. Yeah. Just think about it. What happens when the image you've worked so hard to build doesn't match the reality people are seeing? It's like their narrative is unraveling right before our eyes. And the world's watching to see what will happen next. And that's what makes this situation so compelling. It's not just about one man's legal troubles or one son's bad choices. Right. It's about how powerful perception is, how fragile legacy can be, and the high cost of fame in a world that loves a good scandal. Well said. Thank you. We've covered a lot of ground here, but there's so much more to uncover. We need to go deeper into the public reaction, the legal strategies that might be used, and the long-term implications of this whole mess. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next part of our deep dive. So stay with us. Things are about to get even more interesting. Welcome back to our deep dive. You know, as we continue to look at this whole Combs family situation, we can't ignore the role that the media is playing. Right. It's like they're obsessed with drama. Yeah. Every little detail, every social media post gets blown out of proportion. And with a case like Diddy's, where public perception is so important, all that media attention can really affect the outcome. It's true. 
Think about it this way. The media is basically conducting a separate trial in the court of public opinion. Well, that's a good way to put it. And in that court, headlines become evidence. Sound bites are like witness testimony and clicks and views of the jury's verdict. And with Quincy's vlog launch, the media has this perfect story. The son abandoning his father in his moment of need. Yeah, it's an easy narrative. They're making him look like he's being disloyal trying to capitalize on Diddy's downfall. And that story, whether it's true or not, is getting into people's minds. Yeah. It's affecting how they view both Diddy and Quincy. Mm. And it's definitely something Diddy's lawyers are going to have to deal with. Right, because at the end of the day, jurors are just everyday people. Mm. They see and hear all this media coverage and all the online chatter. It's hard to imagine that wouldn't have at least some influence on their opinion. It would. And this raises some interesting questions about the media's responsibility in cases like this. Okay, yeah. They have this huge power to shape public opinion. Yeah. But sometimes it feels like they're more interested in creating a sensation than reporting the news responsibly. It's like they're trying to balance informing the public with exploiting a family's problems for clicks and views. Exactly. And in this case, it feels like they're leaning more towards the exploitation side. And that's why it's so important to be critical of what we see and hear in the media. Yeah, I agree. We can't just blindly believe everything they tell us. We have to think about their motivations, consider their biases, and form our own educated opinions. Okay, so we've talked about the media frenzy, but let's get back to Quincy's actions and the ethical issues they bring up. Because even if he really did want to separate his career from his father's legal troubles, the timing of his vlog launch is just bad. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And it forces us to think about some complicated questions about family loyalty, personal ambition, and how far you should go to protect yourself. There's this expectation in our society that you stick by your family no matter what. Right. Like the saying, blood is thicker than water. You're supposed to be there for them no matter what. But what happens when being loyal to your family conflicts with your own personal goals and dreams? What happens when you have to distance yourself from a loved one's problems to protect your own future? That's a difficult situation. It is. And there's no easy answer. Quincy's trying to build his own career and establish his own identity. But by starting his vlog in the middle of this scandal, he's accidentally become part of the story, and not in a good way. Yeah, it's hard to escape that perception that he's somehow betraying his father. Even if his intentions were good, it just doesn't look right. It's a real dilemma. It shows that sometimes even when you have the best intentions, things can go wrong, especially when you're dealing with fame and public scrutiny. So we've got Diddy fighting for his legacy, Quincy struggling with his choices, the media stirring the pot, and the public eating it all up. But this is bigger than just one family's drama, isn't it? It is. This whole thing has brought up some deeper societal anxieties about race, class, and whether justice is truly fair for everyone. It makes you wonder if this case would be getting the same amount of attention if Diddy wasn't a wealthy, powerful black man. That's a good point. We can't ignore the fact that black men in America are often judged more harshly and face more serious consequences for their actions. And that's why this case has resonated with so many people. It's not just about celebrity gossip. It's about facing some uncomfortable truths about our society, about the biases and inequalities that still exist. It's a reminder that justice isn't always fair and that power and privilege can often tip the scales. And it's a call to action for all of us to be more aware of these issues, to challenge them and work towards a more just future. Now, as we head into the last part of our deep dive, we need to think about what might happen next. What does the future hold for Diddy, for Quincy, for the Combs family legacy? What legal strategies might be used? How will public perception continue to shape the story? And what lasting impact will this have on everyone involved? These are important questions and we'll be discussing them in detail as we continue our deep dive. Stay tuned because there's a lot more to come. Okay, welcome back to the deep dive. This Diddy and Quincy thing, it's been a wild ride. We've talked about the legal stuff, the family drama, the media frenzy, but what happens now? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. And there are a lot of factors at play here. Yeah. Let's start with Diddy. He's facing some really serious charges, the kind that could put him behind bars. And if that happens, well, it's pretty much over for him. The music modal, the fashion icon, all gone. Yeah. It's almost Shakespearean, a fall from grace, his empire crumbling. But even if he avoids prison, can he really come back from this? Imagine you're a brand thinking about working with Diddy after the trial. Even if he's found not guilty, do you want to risk all that negative attention? It's a PR nightmare. So even in the best case scenario, his image is tarnished. But what about Quincy? I mean, he's young, he's got time to recover, right? Maybe. 
but that petty label, that's tough to shake. It's hard to get 